Hi guys, it's John here, and this is another benchmark test comparison between the Exynos 2200 and this Snapdragon 8 Gen 1. So these have both now got the January update installed, so we're going to go through the usual tests here, starting with the Geekbench CPU test, then move on to the Geekbench Compute, and do to benchmarks, wildlife test in 3 d Mark, and also the Slingshot Extreme test. So let's start off with the Geekbench CPU test and see how it gets on. Okay, so the Geekbench CPU test is finished and there's not really much to talk about here apart from the temperatures being a bit lower because it is winter here and it is quite cold, but the scores haven't increased because of that temperature coolness. So uh, yeah, sadly, there's no improvement there on the Geekbench CPU results. Let's carry on now with the Geekbench Compute and see how they fare there. Okay, so here we have the biggest change, and this is an amazing result really from the Snapdragon, an 11% increase on its Geekbench Compute score compared to last month. So the Exynos is still winning with 8,655, but the Snapdragon has managed to creep up to 7,069, which is the highest I've ever seen the Snapdragon get. Looking at the temperatures as well, they didn't get too hot, only slightly warm in the first test there for the Snapdragon, but yeah, these are really fantastic results with an 11% increase, like I say, for the Snapdragon. The Exynos there decreased by about 3% but uh, that's not really anything too serious but yeah really great results there for the Snapdragon. Okay let's move on to the Antutu benchmarks now and see how they get on there. We're still running what is called 9.5.0 here uh, even though I have obviously downloaded the latest version from the website but uh, yeah let's see how they get on here and then we'll come back when the results are in. <music> Okay, and the results are in, and yeah, similar to the Geekbench CPU, there's not really much here to talk about. The scores have stayed pretty much the same as they were last month, with the Snapdragon still beating the Exynos by a comfortable margin, but uh, not a massive amount, but it is still beating it nonetheless quite easily. Temperatures as well, just staying around the 30 degree mark, so that's nice to see, not too hot here. So there's no overheating. The Thermal Guardian is obviously still turned on with a plus two on its temperature, so these are going as maxed out as they can. Okay, let's move on to the Antutu stress test now. And this will just run 50 minutes for three times as always, and we'll come back when the results are in.
Okay, so the results are in and we're seeing a much bigger improvement here overall, I'd say, for the Exynos. So we can see here, if we compare the performance of the cores and the clock speed, you can see there's no sort of clocking down here, which we got last month. It's a lot more sort of, well, I wouldn't say stable, but it's a lot higher in the core clock speed than it was previously. So it's better to see that this is very similar to the Snapdragon's um, performance here of the cores and the clock. But yeah, we even hit 100% one time, which is uh, quite rare for the Exynos. But yeah, it's staying at around sort of 75 to 80% average, I'd say overall for the Exynos in the first test there. So you compare that to last month, it is a much better overall, I'd say, because the clock speed is running higher than it was previously. So moving on to test two, very similar again to the first test here in both the performance and the cores. And again, if we compare that to last month where we had this horrible clocking uh, down here, sorry, to about 1.5 gigahertz, we are now at least sticking well above the two gigahertz mark. We haven't seen the three gigahertz mark on the graph yet though, sadly, so it is still underclocked in comparison to our friend, the Snapdragon 8 Gen 1, but we'll look at that very shortly. Just moving on to the last test now, and we do see here some interesting clocking here. So it starts off quite low, about 1.5, as we saw in the second test here. The graph scale is obviously different, but then just go back up to about, I'd say about 1.9 gigahertz, which again, isn't really what we want to see particularly. But when we look at the performance of the CPU, it is performing much better at that 1.9 gigahertz rate. So it's a sort of toss up between performance and clock speed with the Exynos, which is uh, what we've been seeing over the last 12 months or so. Let's move on to the Snapdragon now. Okay, and the Snapdragon also has had a much bigger improvement, I'd say overall, compared to the December update. We can see here, although we had some great speeds here and readable performance, well, very good performance, we've now got even higher core speed and even, you know, slightly flakier performance maybe, but it is sticking well above uh, around sort of 70% most of the time, peaking well over 80% as well here. But there are these dips down to below 60, but I think I'd rather have a much faster CPU core speed, which gives me slightly more adjustable performance than the lower core speed and the more stable. So yeah, it's a, again, it's a toss up between what you really prefer here. Looking at test number two, very, very similar, but the performance is definitely better, I'd say. We do see, however, that the cores are slightly lower here on average overall in comparison. But uh, yeah, that's a nice test there for the Snapdragon. And the final test is still very nice as well. We've still got this three gigahertz mark appearing on the graph scale. It doesn't quite reach that, but it is still sticking well above 2.5, 2.6 gigahertz for the majority of the test. And that stability is much better. It's actually peaking less to down to 60 in the final test. So yeah, really fantastic performance there from the Snapdragon. Let's move on now to our 3D Mark Wildlife Extreme Stress Test, and we'll see how they both compare there. Okay, so no changes here in the extreme stress test. We can see that the Snapdragon is still winning the best and lowest loop in terms of performance, and the Exynos is still winning with its stability, which is obviously because its cores are running slower. So again, we've got this stability versus performance, so easily winning there for the Snapdragon with the 2200 still just giving that more stable experience. Let's move on to the Slingshot extreme test now and see how they do there.
Okay, so we've gone back to the Exos 2200 here, winning all of the physics tests, whereas last month the 8 Gen 1 was winning the first two. So yeah, it's interesting to see that there's been a, a bit of a boost on both. So we can see that the Exos has increased by about 5% and the Snapdragon by about 8.5%. So it's pretty good for both. And it is what was expected with the physics tests going to the 2200 and the graphics going to the 8 Gen 1. So yeah, not too hot either. The Snapdragon did get a couple of degrees warmer, but nothing uh, too serious there. You'd still be able to hold your phone quite comfortably at 38. And especially in the winter, it'd be a nice little hand warmer for you to hold. Okay, so if we look at the overall results here, you can see that the total number of wins has now gone back to even Stevens here, with six wins going to the 2200 and six going to the HN1. So really, we're back to the whole thing where both phones are performing pretty much the same as each other, whereas the Snapdragon is always going to be better graphics-wise, and the Exynos is always going to be better compute-wise. So it really depends how you use your phone. If you're a gamer, then obviously the Snapdragon is the phone to go for. And if you're not a massive gamer, and you can only get the Exynos, then you don't need to worry about performance because your phone will be performing very nicely indeed. Now the most interesting thing I found here overall was the battery life remaining. So we, both phones ended on 25%. There was a bit of a problem during the test where the automation stopped working. So they were sat around not doing anything for a while, but obviously there's no difference between them, but the battery life has remained the same this time. So previously the Exynos has been much better with its battery life and you know ending with at least 10% more battery life than the Snapdragon but this time around they were absolutely equal so quite shocking but really great to see that they finally improved performance of the Snapdragon or maybe they've actually made the performance of the Exynos worse in regards to battery life. I'd hope it's actually the former there with the Snapdragon getting some refinements and improvements with its battery usage because that's really a fantastic result there for the Snapdragon. So I hope you enjoyed this video. It may be one of the last ones where we're comparing these phones because obviously the S23 will be coming out soon and it remains to be seen whether or not the Exynos will come to S23 in the UK and other areas because there has been rumors that they're going to ditch the Exynos in the S22 in the S series range. Now that is just a rumor and there was also the rumor obviously previous year where the 2200 had been completely canned. So it'd be interesting to see whether we do get two chips again in the S range Galaxy phones, but that will be remain to be seen when they launch or have the launch event on the 1st of Feb this year. So I hope this video was useful. Do let me know if you have any comments down below. I'll see if I can do another camera test when it gets a bit warmer outside. It's about minus four degrees here at the moment. So there's no chance I'm going outside doing a camera test right now. But yeah, we'll try and get one done before the S23 releases and just see how they've improved, if at all, over the last few months. There's been no mention of camera improvements in any of the updates sadly so I don't think there will be but it might be worth having one sort of last final camera test before the S23 comes out. So again thanks again for watching don't forget to like and subscribe and I'll see you in the next video.